Welcome back all. All right, so it finally quit raining for me. I am gonna get up this cliff and I'm gonna get these next two Hinoxes dead. And then we'll proceed on from there. After we do this little mini hunt or whatever, we're gonna continue on with my overall walkthrough and we're gonna do what I call the lap around the Great Plateau. Why do we do the lap around the Great Plateau? Well, for one, there's a lot of Korok seeds to be had. Lots and lots of Korok seeds. Treasure. There's going to be treasure out the yin-yang. And, uh, not to mention, there's going to be plenty of weaponry to pick up and stuff, gemstones, etc. We're also going to catch another horse. It's not going to be from the same area. It's just going to be a crappy two-spur, three-speed horse. But I'm going to call it a seller horse. And that horse will come in handy later in the game. There's a side quest where you can actually sell a horse for a gold rupee, 300 rupees. Okay, so there's that beetle I've been talking about like half my game. Uh, you're going to need 15 of those later on for suit upgrades, so you might as well start collecting them now when you see them. They're bright yellow. Uh, they're pretty easy to spot. Okay, I do want to check to see if my big hardy radish respawn standby. Doesn't look like it did. That's unfortunate. Okay, no big deal. Looks like my hardy durians are still out of play as well. Okay, once again, make sure you got that disguised bone attack up, but fully equipped. Arm up, suit up, and eat up. Before any big hunt, before any big kill. Now this guy doesn't have any leg guards on, so you can actually stand right next to him and you don't have to worry about damaging your weapon for no reason. Stand right next to the meat of his thigh here, and you should be safe. So just like before, Dragon Bone Moblin Club, Disguise Bone Attack Up Suit. Make sure you still got your extra hearts, and we're going to eat an attack power meal. This time I'm going to go for about five minutes, that should get us to where we're going. So we're going to take care of this Hanox, and then we're going to fly over here to this next Hanox. Two in a row, and let's get to work. Very devastating combination of weaponry there. That's why I call it a weapon system, because it really is a system. You got the weapon, you got the suit, and you got the meal working for you. Now these two Hinoxes are going to drop night weapons, so you are going to want to clear some space for this guy. I don't really have any trash to get rid of, that's had some use on it. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty happy with my inventory. That one may have some use on it. I seem to have lost a bow. For the life of me, I don't know how. No, never mind. I upgraded my inventory. I'm a genius. Alright, so now we have a uh, knight's bow, which is new to our inventory. It's an in-between, the royal stuff and the lower level soldier stuff. So it's a good weapon to have. It's kind of like a burner bow, or a backup to your royal bows when those break. Alright, folks, so from here... We are going to head off this direction. There's another croc in the area. It'll be a glistening, swirling pile of leaves. And I'm going to try to be quick about this because our uh, attack power meal is ticking away. And there it is off there in the distance. You can probably see it now. I guess I really didn't have to kill this guy. I keep forgetting I got that suit on. Okay, where'd you go? There you are. Now this one's very fast moving, and he zigzags. Very difficult to catch. Uh, stand by, my gamepad's about to die. Wait, these gamepads don't last very long, do they? All right, so that's where that one was. Okay, so now we're gonna head off toward our red pin where we're ultimately gonna end up. Uh, 
but I am going to land a little shy of that. Uh, there's two reasons. One, uh, there's another big hardy radish down here. Oops. You scared away my beetle, you jerks. Okay, in this little cavern, you're going to see a yellow flower. Just for the map, I'll show you guys where we're at and what we're doing. That's where our... Why did I put two there? That's where our big hardy radish was. And now we're inside this cave under this mountaintop or whatever. Alright, so from here we're going to head toward our Hinox, and we got plenty of time left on that attack power meal, so we are in good shape. And this is another red Hinox, so relatively easy to kill, and it will go down very quickly with that bone weapon, bone attack up, and attack power meal. And no leg guards, so get right next to his thigh here, and let the swinging begin. That broke just in the nick of time. So I still got one left, and that has not been touched yet, so that's a good thing. Now, I don't normally recommend carrying these night halberds, because they, I don't know, they're just not real good on attack power. But they are quite durable, so since I already have a knight's broadsword, I guess I'll hold on to this spear for the time being. Ooh, and there's another uh, knight's bow. Alright, so there's our other Hanox. Now, since I still have the time left on my meal, I could warp away and kill one more blue Hinox. We would launch from the Ice Block Shrine, the Karyana's Shrine, fly down to right about here somewhere. Actually, kind of right south of that shrine, there's an island, and it's flat on top, and there's a Hinox sleeping up there as well. But, uh, since we're already here, I'm just going to eat another attack power meal for that guy. I'm going to take advantage of being here. We're going to get a couple more Karak Seeds. And we're going to get that treasure chest I mentioned. It's a DLC, and it's a, uh, crap. Unfortunately, I think the bats gave me away with these guys. Alright, so Karak Seeds and DLC treasure chest. This is going to be Zant's helmet, and it gives you a bonus of being unfreezable which will come in handy later on when we get into the snow region and we're dealing with ice-based enemy attacks. Uh, very, very handy to have on. Okay, so for this Karak Seed, you're going to want to knock down one of these trees so that it falls right into that island across the way there. It's going to act as a land bridge. Or a bridge, I should say. Not really a land bridge, but you know what I mean. Very steady as she goes. Careful not to lose your footing, otherwise you'll drop the rock and have to do it all over again. And I'm sure you've already caught sight of the next Karak Seed across the way there, that pinwheel. Uh, actually, we're going to go ahead and fly over there now. And it's going to be a bit of a run and jump and fly. Now what I'm going to do for these guys is get a bomb ready. And they're going to spawn right in front of Link here. Yep. Well, they're too far away. Okay, so we're going to have to use a bow. You get out a burner bow and a bomb arrow. Because when they come back right in front of Link, they're going to be nice, closely clustered together. And we're going to pop them all at the same time with one bomb arrow. Boom, skis, baby. Alright, so just to show you on the map where we're at now. So that's where that first one was. There's the trees we knocked down. There's the second one. That's where we are now. So now we're going to fly on over to this little island. 
and that's going to be the one that's housing our treasure chest. I don't know if you can see that lighting up or not. Yellow is a little brighter. So how do you get over there? Simply climb a tree, get the altitude, and fly on over. There you have it. Unfreezable, baby. Alright folks, since we're still in hunt mode, let's go ahead and get on over to that ice block shrine. We'll kill that last Tanox, and that'll go ahead and wrap this video segment up. All right, we're gonna fly down. I don't know if you can see it on my screen or not, but there's a big flat topped island out in front of us. And again, it's just south of that a minor test of strength shrine there that we finished earlier on. Now this one is gonna have one leg guard on, so we're gonna go on the side of him, what I call the soft side. That's going to be the side that does not have a leg guard. Don't forget to suit back up. Get that fun attack up going for you. Okay, so you can see that it's, he's got the one leg guard on his right leg, so we're going to go to his left side. Right next to his thigh there. Go ahead and put that bone weapon on. And we're already suited up, and I'll just go ahead and eat a three-minute quick-burning attack power meal here. And just like before. Now this one is a blue, so he takes a couple extra swats, but you'll get him just the same. Okay, now there's going to be a new weapon introduced with this guy. It's going to be a, uh, a Gerudo weapon. And I am going to trade out my soldier's or my knight's broadsword for it because it is quite a bit more durable. Moonlight Scimitar. Uh, about the same attack power, 25 versus 26, but very, very durable. So that's a very good weapon to have as a backup when all these break. All right, since I still have three minutes left on my attack power meal... I'm going to do something that we haven't done yet. I'm going to kill a uh, brain fart. I'm going to kill a uh, Lionel. And this is a great hunting ground for Lionels because you can fly in, do a lot of damage from the air with your uh, Forest Dweller's bow, which is your triple arrow bow. And it's 15 times 3, so assuming you're in close enough to his head, you're going to get three arrows in on his face, three headshots at 15, that's 30 apiece, that's doing 90 points of damage with every hit. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Don't forget to save your game. So this is where we're heading. And go ahead and put yourself a pin down somewhere just so that you get a trajectory of where to fly. Don't forget to save your game just in case things go horribly wrong. You can try again. Make sure you got your bone weapon equipped. Whoops, what am I doing? Bone weapon, forest dweller's bow, and we're gonna use regular arrows. You'll want a good shield equipped. And we got that bone attack up still going. We got our attack power meal still going. So away we go. Now I'm kind of running out of stamina, so I'm gonna let myself build back up before I start flying. And we're going to go ahead and reduce altitude. 
Now the thing about aerial attacks is you're going to continue going the direction you're already traveling in. So we're going to get down at a relatively close altitude. We're going to come in at a sideways angle. We're going to get as many headshots in as we can. Uh, when you see you're almost out of stamina, eat one of those yellow meals we cooked up. That completely replenishes your green and gives you extra on the yellow side. As much damage as possible from the air. Okay, now why did we come in from the side? If you take out that bow and arrow while you're traveling downward, say you're free falling, that's the direction you're going to keep traveling when you take the bow and arrow out. So if you're flying in from a sideways motion, Link gets some extra shots in from the air while he's still airborne. Okay, so we're going to stand right next to his behind. We're going to do the same thing like with the Hanox. We're going to spin around until he's finished off. Very, very easy. That's how you take down a Lionel very easily. And I'm going to get rid of this stupid thing. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I'm going to hold on to at least one spear. And I'm going to get rid of that. This is the equivalent of the Knight's Claymore. Now, I don't recommend holding on to this bow. It's not a very good bow, unless we're getting bonuses on him, which I don't think we're doing just yet. I'm going to pick it up just to see what we're working with. It's only 10 times 3 It's not a very good bow. Uh, it's only 30 total, assuming all three of your arrows hit. So these are better. I guess I'll hold on to it for now. Okay, so same idea. Set a pin somewhere just so you have a trajectory. Warp back up top side. We're going to do the exact same thing. Now it's going to take about a minute, maybe 45 seconds or so, to travel to this next one. So you're going to want to make sure you have at least a minute and a half left on your attack power meal by now. If you don't, uh, it may run out before you finish killing him. Okay, so I got almost two full minutes. That should be plenty of time. Okay, once again, we're going to let that stamina recharge. So what I was trying to say earlier about the trajectory that Link is flying, when you take that bow and arrow out, make sure this is how you're flying through the air. At a sideways parallel to the ground as much as possible, flight path, because if you're going down like that, you're going to hit the ground that much sooner, and uh, you're going to run out of the opportunity to, to get those uh, bow and arrow shots in from the air. Okay, so I'm going to use another yellow meal here. Or you could just keep using green, but I like the yellow. If anything else, it just replenishes your green. And you can also eat green while you're up here. I mean, I guess I could do that just to show you guys. Stay behind him too, by the way, because he doesn't know where you're at yet. So he's going to get up, maybe spin around. Stay behind him as much as possible. If he goes to spin one direction, go the other way. If he goes to spin to his right, head to his left. Stay behind him as long as possible. You should be able to get him dead before he really has a chance to react to you. All right, folks, so that's it. That's how to take down those Lynels very, very quickly, very, very easily. And as you can see, my Forest Dwellers bow is just about done. No big deal. Because as we do our lap around the Great Plateau, we're going to get another one. Alright folks, that's hunt mode. We just took down, what, one, two, three, four... Four Hanox and two Lynels. Not a bad deal. Okay, when we come back, we're going to meet back up at the Great Plateau. Uh, Ice Block Shrine, and we're going to do this gigantic lap around the Great Plateau. Lots of treasure, lots of Crocs, lots of fun.